Good morning guys, Unfrequent in World, and today I want to do a review on something that I just spent a week building, and that is a Costco gazebo. It's a cedar 14 by 12 gazebo, and I wanted to show you guys, don't mind the deer flies, they're not going anywhere. I wanted to show you guys some of the problems I had, do I think it's a good product, how long did it take to build, uh, some of the stumbling blocks that my father and I ran into, um, and is it just a sturdy good product should you uh, look at this is it worth buying I'll uh, show you right now so behind me you can see the gazebo it is 95% uh, finished and we got the roof up yesterday and on the box when you purchase this in Costco it's gonna say 12 by 14 gazebo now what I want to do with this um, my wife wanted it to put a picnic table under we have a big party every year but what I bought it for was to back a boat and a four-wheeler under. So I thought 12 by 14 would be perfect. And when you're in the store looking at it, you don't realize it looks big because you're in the store. Um, it's not 12 by 14 between the posts. It's 12 by 14 from roof end to roof end. So between the posts, you've actually got 9 foot 10 inches and 11 foot 9 inches. So be aware of that because it doesn't say that on the box. So your uh, main supports here are a six by nine and these are not solid. I thought these were solid, but they're two by two all the way around on the inside. And when you unpack this, they actually have uh, other struts and parts inside here that you have to make sure you empty all four of these posts out. Uh, the package comes in three boxes and weighs 600 and some pounds. So let's just round it up and say 700 pounds. We had ours delivered by Costco, which if you're aware of Costco policy, they don't charge you delivery when you order online, um, but they jack the price up. So in store, for example, this was $18.99 for the gazebo, but if you bought it online, it was 2,100 bucks plus tax in each instance there. So you're paying $200 for delivery. Um, what I did with these posts is I wanted mine to be movable so I didn't put footings in I used um, I had six by nine stones or sorry stones that would hold a six by nine block these according to the plan were actually supposed to go mounted on here and out this way but the stones that I had originally when I put this in I thought I was gonna be there's a chance in a year or two we want to move this gazebo so I didn't pour footings let me tell you guys, if you know anything about building, um, pour footings to have everything level for you to make this a much easier build, if you can. If you can't, you can do what I did. Um, I would never suggest just putting it on the ground because the wood is gonna soak up every little bit of water from the ground, that's not good. You're gonna rot your post. You have to put it on something. So I put mine on blocks. I guess I should mention my level of building competency. Um, I've built over the years with my father, we've built additions on his house, a porch. I've built a 12 by 12 bunkie, worked on a camp, worked on all kinds of stuff. Self-taught everything, never went to school. So anybody who has a little bit of building experience can do this. There are, I mean, it's step-by-step -step instructions. You just have to follow them. Make sure like your high school teachers used to tell you to read the entire step before you go off and do it because a lot of this is repetition. You're going to build one roof uh, panel and then it says repeat and build the second and then it says repeat and build the second roof panel. Well, you got to make sure sometimes the steps are a little bit different where they'll say on the second roof panel, don't do this step. So you want to make sure you're going to read the entire, whatever portion you're working on, um, the read the full thing before you do it. Because my dad and I had to backtrack probably four instances where we went, oh geez, we did that to both of these. Now we got to undo one. So you got to watch for that. Um, total building time probably took myself I had 34 hours into this and my dad was somewhere probably around 25 hours he'd come over I'd get up early and work on it in the morning he'd come over and help me so you're looking at 50 hours to build the gazebo now both of us said that we both have a lot of building experience but if we were to build one of these again we could probably do it in half that amount of time just because you're reading these instructions and it's very fiddly and there is a lot of parts so that leads to the pros and cons of this um, system. The pros are that for me, being a single guy working on this, I thought it would be perfect to have all my parts pre-made, pre-cut, pre-filled, pre-drilled everything. Your uh, cedar is pre-stained, so everything is done for you. So when you're spending this two grand, 
A lot of you out there are handy, like I am, and you're going to say, I could build this for half the price. Yes, you can. So, if you want to build something that's not going to be as pretty with just 2x6s and whatever, and you would just have a 2x6 brace, you can do that for probably 1100 or 1200 bucks because I priced everything out, all of your hardware. Now, to note on this thing, it actually has weather sealing strips that come down the roof. It has little uh, tin pieces that go over um, where the roof panels join together. So they've thought of everything and it's very well engineered. It was, at the $2,000 price, I will say it was an okay deal for me. It was not a fantastic, oh my God, we have to do it. But we'll get to price in a minute. So getting everything square and level was fairly easy. We used Tapcon bolts. You'll see these are to go into cement. Just to put two of these in each block took my dad and I a couple of hours because it's very hard uh, drilling into stone or cement and we had a couple that broke off and there's always issues. So that's a big issue. Just to get, it took a full day just to get these supports up and then you've got to build all your beams. They come in the box and you're, they're multiple pieces that you're gonna to bolt together to make your crosser beams. So that took a full day for us to get this up leveled squared and then I put these on my dad went home and I worked a 12 hour day that day to put these crossers on at the end so it's a full day just to get your base and your square up then it was a second day you're gonna on the ground build all of these four panels two long ones and two short ones that took us another full day um, again you're following rinky dink instructions you got to stop and it's just tedious going following the, the instructions put this piece looking for the pieces they are all numbered on the ends so it's a little tedious to find the pieces and and like i say a full day then you get to the roof uh panel tin okay that's where everything up until this point was very smooth um and the tin is uh it's very light it's not something that i would have purchased if i had built one of these on my own i would have definitely went with a heavier gauge this says right on it, not made for snow load. And I do live in Northern Ontario, so like I said to my wife, we're going to try this for a couple years. And if it can't handle the snow out here, I'll end up replacing it in a couple years. I'll buy a heavier gauge and redo it. But for now, we're going to try it. I'll show you guys. So, um, the tin comes in a little end section. Here's one piece. Then there's a middle piece. Uh, another three panels over it, then another panel, and then it reverses and, and you've got to attach them all and you put in your roofing screws. They suggest doing this by hand, no freaking way. If you know anything about uh, doing tin or roofs or anything, you're not gonna do all these by hand. You have settings on your drill guns for um, how tight they will screw down before they stop. So, and it's usually a one to 10 ring around the outside of your drill. I used number four on mine and it would put enough pressure on these that the seal would set, but then the, the drill would not put any more, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go down and ruin the tin. So that's an option. Um, you're not gonna do all these by hand. That would take forever. I'm hoping you guys can see that on the end of these panels, this is not straight. So on both of my long panels, um, you gotta put these uh, gable protectors on the, the, the bottom, the, it's um, your fascia end and then you've got one strip with weather sealing that runs up each side of the panels. Um, these do not fit. So by the time you get all of your tin on there and your little corner pieces, I had to move jury rig my tin because you got to keep the outside edge flush on all my long panels. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see this edge, it's not straight. So you'll actually have to, I had to cut the tin down at each end, put a slice in it and push the tin up so that it would move and, and run along the edge. So you've got to jury rig your own. At the end, there's some fiddliness. Both of my long panels were like that. They didn't fit entirely properly. And where they have pre-drilled holes, you're not gonna be able to put your uh, roofing screws into those holes. You're just gonna to have to move over, make your own holes wherever, wherever you've got a support and you would have to make it fit. It takes a little bit of jigging and so therefore I've got a few holes that are exposed here. And, uh, but because it's an open structure, that's not really a problem. It's not a roof that needs to be sealed, but be aware of that, that at least in my kit, we had probably an hour and a half worth of playing around just to get the tin to line up. I had to cut one end of tin and I had to put two slices uh, and bend it up a little bit to make it fit. So it doesn't fit 100% and you gotta be a little bit handy to deal with that 
and that's the only real issue we had was the tin. Also, for the love of God, do not drop a screw, a nut, a lock washer, and do not lose one single thing because they don't give you not one extra piece of anything. There's, I don't know, got to be a thousand screws and nuts and bolts and washers, and they don't give you one extra for anything. So they're tight. <laughs> then after three days of work came the fun part. You've got to get three friends to come over and help you lift this roof up into place. I'm going to tell you guys how we did it because it was actually um, for three grown old working guys who have a lot of experience. It was still a chore to figure out what the heck we were doing, how we were going to get this up there safely. And I'll explain. The book tells you how to do it. Um, kind of. It tells you where to start, but it doesn't tell you the easiest way to do it. And after it took about three hours to get this roof on here last night, I'll tell you the steps we did to, to get it up. We followed what the book told us, which was to take a long panel, your 14 foot edge, and you're going to come up on the outside of your posts. You're going to lift that uh, roofing panel up over top and lay it down. So when you lay it down flat, there's a guy standing in the middle of your structure here on a ladder. And what's going to happen is there are, are uh, beam rests that you've put on the bottom of each of these panels. I'll show you one of those. So these are the brackets here that you're going to attach to the bottom of each roof panel. And so when you lift the panel up and over top, it's going to sit on these. So most of the weight is going to be supported by your uh, outside uh, wall here. You're going to lower this down so that the guy in the middle is just going to hold up the weight of one panel. Now, your other two guys better be fast. As he's standing there holding that, the other two guys are going to move their ladders go to the other to the first short end and raise another panel up from the back over the top and lean it against this first panel that's up now the guy in the middle is going to be holding two panels up so your two workers that are moving the ladders the, the, there's a third guy that helps lift the panels up over the back and each other guy is, is in charge of a ladder moving it around so you really you could do it with three it's hard uh, the fourth guy just pushing up over top of the back helps a lot your two other guys are going to grab the other long panel and it's going to come up over top and they're all going to rest and join together in the middle. What we had to do, because we were a little bit slow, our guy in the middle, his arms got tired, his head got tired, he was resting this on there, and it took us 20 minutes of... We had preset all of the panels where they needed to go around the building and we were ready to lift them up. But by the time you move ladders and the ground here isn't flat, they got a wobbly ladder, you got this or that, or a guy drops a tool, the guy in the middle got tired and sore. So what we did was on the top of his ladder, we got him a block of wood from down there on the pile. And he set the block of wood on here and he actually was supporting uh, one of the panels to help him. And then he could whoop, put his arms down, take a rest. And we actually let it sit there for 10 minutes while he took a rest and then we went back at it. Once you've got three panels up, what you're supposed to do is these are pre-drilled in three places. So here's one roof panel, here's the other roof panel, and you're going to start at the bottom. You're going to bolt in three places each one of these panels together. Um, one thing to mention guys, um, when you've got these roof panels together and you're putting these bolts through here, they, they do have a bit of a wow in them. As all lumber will warp a little bit, these were spaced so far apart that we couldn't get the bolts through. So what I did was I took a C-clamp and uh, I just put a C-clamp close to where I needed to put the bolt and I tightened it down until we got each bolt through and we had to do that and move the C-clamp along for each board. So it's a bit of work, but uh, C-clamp is something you're going to need. They don't mention that to you in the book. You're going to need to do that. So you're going to, once you've got those up, you're going to bolt the one long panel, the short one, and the other long one together. And those three will hold themselves up in the center. You'll be missing one panel. In my case, it was this panel here on this end was not here, it was the last one we put on. So you've got an opening, and at that point, you're gonna go up and put in, I haven't tightened those down, but those are my braces um, that go in the center. And you've got a roof cap that needs to be put on while this panel is out. Then, the final step, I'll show you guys, we just showed you the braces that went on there. The final step is to lift up your last small panel and uh, you have to make sure in the instructions, one of the things we backtracked on was we had put the braces on your last panel. You can't do that 
because when you slide this fourth one up into place, you don't know how much overhang there's gonna be on this beam. And you can see the screw holes where I had put those braces in. Those braces would be behind my beam right now. The braces need to be in front. So in the instruction book, it tells you do not put the braces on the final small panel. And that's because now it's one of the final steps I have to do. You're going to just put the brace on so it's right here from this point up because that's where my roof is sitting and we've kind of squared it up as best we can. We've got the same amount of overhang on all four corners and then you're gonna put those final braces on there. Okay guys, here's pretty much, uh, you don't need a lot of tools for this job. A couple of drills uh, so two guys can work on panels at the same time. Uh, each guy's gonna need a socket uh, with you know a couple various sizes for whatever, 7 16 9 16 um, shovel for your putting your blocks in a level of course you want to make sure your walls are level and then I have all my little bits and ends and things like that um, so not a lot of uh, hardware hardware intensive stuff but okay so now we've got the building up it's finished it was 50 hours of work um, like I was saying originally when it was a $2,100 product we were like my wife and I both said well that was an okay deal we needed it and it was you know it was okay at that time my wife went back to Costco yesterday to pick up some other stuff and our Costco is an hour and a half away from us and when she went in there they had one gazebo left uh, and it was down a back aisle and they had put it up on a shelf and it was 1267 so in one week's time we just bought this a week ago it went from uh, 1899 in the store to 1267 so my wife said okay she went up to the counter and she said Here's the situation. We bought this online, so we know we paid a little bit more for shipping. And being reasonable people, she said, can you reimburse me the difference between, um, you know, taking the shipping into account? So we would have had $600 in savings. And they said, no, we can't do that for you. And luckily, I had talked to my wife beforehand, and I told her to have her father, who was with her, stand by the last shed and claim it. I said, what you're going to do, and what we ended up doing, is buy that last shed and basically walk out the store, turn around, walk back in, and return it with our online receipt. And so my wife, being an honest person, told the girl, she said, this is what's gonna happen. She said, if you don't just reimburse me the difference and you guys keep the money for the shipping, she said, I'm gonna buy that last shed and do exactly that. And they said, go ahead. So they went and got two workers, had her load this up on a, on a pup cart, bring it to the front of the store. She returned it, basically brought it right up to the return line, stood in line, returned it with the other receipt, got the $800 back, including the shipping money, which we told them they could keep. And then the two poor sods had to take this thing back to the shelf they got it off of. It was absolutely ridiculous. But so now I have to say for 1267 plus tax, this is a fantastic buy. That now you've reached the price of a guy going to the store and buying uh, basic square lumber to build something like this. And you've got nice fancy arches finished black hardware it's already stained for that price absolutely guys gobble it up because it is a fantastic very sturdy very sturdy structure and i am you know this thing's going to be here for 25 years so absolutely i would give it a thumbs up at the two thousand dollar price you're kind of on that iffy edge um, and it's a lot of work to put together but at the 1200 bucks absolutely so that's my review guys i hope it helps if anyone has any questions or if you're building one yourself and you have any problems uh, you know, drop drop me a question down below and I'll happily answer it for you. Thanks for watching guys. I'll show you guys the part my dad built. That's a fascia beam right there. He put it on backwards. I wouldn't have did that. It had to be him. <laughs>